All right, let's try a problem on thermal expansion and calculate how much force can be generated just with the power of heat. We've got a bar here that's one meter long. It's made out of aluminum. It's 100 millimeters in diameter, so it's about that big. Okay? It's certainly something you could pick up. And it's fixed on one end. It can't move on one end. And on the other end, there's a two millimeter gap. Okay? So the gap is about that big. And the temperature change is going to be 200 degrees C, which is quite a lot. And what we're going to want to do now is find out how much force is generated when that bar expands, hits that immovable uh, barrier, and tries to keep expanding. How much force is generated internally between that barrier and the end of that bar wanting to move? Okay, this problem is going to go like a lot of other problems in strength and materials. We've really got a problem we don't know how to solve here. I don't know how to deal with a two millimeter gap in one step. What I do know how to do is to break the problem into two parts and then combine those two parts to get the final answer. So the two parts I'm going to use are, I'm going to figure out how far this bar would expand if there was no barrier. If this barrier wasn't there, how far would it stretch just due to that much heat? And then I'm going to figure out how much force it would take to move the end of the bar back so that the total deformation is only two millimeters. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's start by finding how much the bar will expand without the barrier. Okay, the expression for change in length is alpha L delta T, where alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion, L is length, and delta T is the change in temperature. Coefficient of thermal expansion, remember, is a material property. Every material has its own coefficient of thermal expansion. The one for aluminum is 25 times 10 to the 6 per degree C. Now, I need to warn you, this number changes a little bit with the uh, assumed temperature range. For room temperatures and slightly above, it's actually a little lower than that. But since this number is large, I'm using that. Okay. Funny units here, one per degree C. It's actually strain per degree C. So this is really 25 micro strain per degree C. And strain is either in length over length or it's unit list, depending on how you want to write it down. So that's why you have that funny unit. If you plug the numbers in here, 25 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C times 1 meter times 200 degrees C. Now, I'm being very careful to uh, carry my units through the problem. Always do that, because if the units work out, chances are the numbers will work out. If the units are correct, the numbers will pretty much come along for the ride. So, I've got to cancel out the degree C there. I'm going to get an answer in meters. Well, I like that. So, if you multiply this out, you get 0 0.005 meters that's five millimeters. Okay, about that far. A little, a little less than a quarter inch if you want to do it in English units. So, if no barrier, then delta L equals 0 0.005 meters. Now, I'm writing that up there because I'm going to have to erase this. I don't have a whole lot of space on my board. So, we've got that part of the problem done. Next thing we're going to do is figure out how much force it takes to push the free end of the bar back that direction. Now it's going to, ex going to want to expand 5 millimeters. We're going to let it expand 2 millimeters. So what we need now is the force required to push the free end of that bar back by 3 millimeters. Let me erase this. There we go. Now, step two. I'm going to use another expression for delta L that we've seen before. It's FL over AE, where that's force, length, area, and modulus of elasticity. I don't have an area yet, so let me calculate that. Now, area is pi r squared. It's also pi d squared over 4. Since we're usually given dimensions in terms of diameter, it's convenient to figure out area that way. And that's pi over 4 times 0 0.1 meter 
squared. And I have to look at my cheat sheet over here. 0, 0, 007854. 0, 0, 0, 0, okay, there's the area in square meters. Now I'll tend to do these problems using five significant figures. So there's the answer to five significant figures. Now, go back to our governing expression here. What I really want is force. Force is on the wrong side of the uh, equal side. So let me rearrange this expression, do just a little bit of algebra here. Okay. So now I've got the force required in terms of delta L, which I now know to be 3 millimeters. I didn't know that before I had done this calculation. Now I know that's 3 millimeters. A I know now. E is given and L is given. Okay, so let's just put some numbers in there. 0 0.003 meters. I'm going to do everything in meters here. Times 0 0.0078540 meters squared. Times 70 times 10 to the 9th. This is in gigapascals. So I'm going to do this in newtons per meter squared. Divide the whole thing. Conveniently, L is 1 here. Right. Now, let's do what we always do. Let's check our units. Meters cancel out there and there. Meters squared cancel out there and there. I'm left with newtons. Okay, this is good. I've got the right units. Now, I'm a little bit I'm running out of space here. Hopefully, this will fit on the screen. And you get a surprisingly big number here. It's 1,649,000. It's 340, but since I'm using uh, five significant figures, I'll limit it to that. That's a huge amount of force to generate with a one millimeter bar that I could probably lift without too much trouble. It's heavy, it's big, but it's not that big. If you want to do this in uh, uh, English units, you get about 371,000 pounds. So very, very large forces generated from a fairly small piece of metal by a temperature change only.